Hello YouTubers and computer nerds everywhere. Welcome to episode 8 of This Old Computer and me trying to resurrect this Teletech System Master single board Z80 S100 computer. And it's been a while since episode 7. Uh, a lot been going on. I've been traveling and busy with other things. But mainly I had to give some serious thought to where I was going to go with this because I was having no luck at all getting this uh, floppy drive emulator to work. And, you know, it's probably my fault there. I'm probably doing something wrong. Or the disk image I have just really isn't bootable like it's supposed to be. So that's, that's a possibility, too. One of those two things. I've done something wrong or the disk image isn't bootable. So I gave it a good, long, hard thought. And one of my other projects that I'm working on is um, a Z80 breadboard computer. And I've got that up and running. And I've been writing software for it, writing it in assembly language and having some good luck with that and I thought well let me see if I can write some software for the system master and actually exercise the computer a little bit and see if it actually works. I was pretty sure it was working probing around with the oscilloscope that you know it looked like it was trying to boot up it just couldn't quite get there so um, one change I've made since last time is I've got a zero insertion for socket in here plugged into the old um, EEPROM socket so I can swap out either EEPROMs or EEPROMs like I've got in here now and run some test software and I've got a little program running right here that's uh, writing out to uh, PIO port A uh, different uh, different numbers I can write out to it and I've got a little oscillating pattern here of, of eight lights and it works great so the computer is actually working I just wrote, built this little circuit over here Zoom in on it a little bit. There we go. Um, built this little circuit over here and interfaced it to the Teletech to port A and then uh, wrote a little assembly program, compiled it, put it in the EE prompt, plugged it in here, fired it up, and what do you know? It works. So the System Master is working. And I've run a couple of other programs too. I mean, it's, it's early days with this yet, but uh, I'm thinking this is the way to go to get this thing up and running. Put my own software, my own firmware in it, and get it up and running that way. Um, I'll show you another little program I wrote for it. So here's another little program I wrote. All it does is count up and output the, the number to the port. Let me reset it. It'll start over at 1 and start counting up in binary. Um, works great. Uh, I love having the uh, zero insertion force socket on here. I can just pop the, uh, I, I'm using an EEPROM right here right, for, for my testing purposes. I've got the, uh, the original EEPROM for the System Master right here. I took it out. With the zero insertion force socket I can swap out the EEPROMs really quick and easy. I don't have to worry about lining up all the little pins with the socket and making sure it goes in straight without bending any of the pins or anything. It's just in and out really quick. Love it. Uh, best thing since sliced bread. So yeah, I've been developing some software on my little breadboard computer for testing on this, you know, and when it works on the breadboard I can bring it over here and plug it in here. So I can, I can develop software on a little breadboard computer, make sure it's working, bring it over here, plug it into the System Master and test it and make sure the System Master, I can exercise different areas of the System Master and I'm planning on doing more of that in the future. Let me give you a quick look at the uh, breadboard computer I'm talking about that I built. So here's the little uh, breadboard computer I built. Um, it's sort of an evolution of the Z80 test rig that I built a while back and made a video about when I was testing all of the, the Z80 chips I salvaged from um, e-waste. And in fact, all of the chips on this board actually were salvaged from e-waste. I tested them, they work. Hey, build stuff with them, right? Cheaper than going out and buying parts. So uh, I've got a Z80 here. Actually, I've got the NEC 780C version of it. Um, just because I'm saving my old uh, um, vintage Z80 chips for actual, you know, retro computing projects. And some of them don't like to be clocked really slowly. I've got a, I've, I've got a uh, 555 timer here providing the clock frequency and it. It can be slowed down really, really slow. 
that's the M1 signal coming off of the uh, Z80 chip right there when that flashes. And here's the here's the clock signal over here if that flashes. But I can speed it way up. And I got the same program running here, the same oscillating light program I had going on the uh, on the System Master. Um, it's just simply pretty simple little computer. It's got the uh, the Z80 chip. It's got um, again a zero in, zero insertion force socket with a EEPROM in it. I can just pop this out, put a new program in it in a minute, and pop it right back in. Um, it's got uh, one 8-bit output port and one 8-bit input port with um, dip switches over here for the input. I have just had a blast um, playing with this thing. Uh, building it was dead simple. Um, designed it in KiCad and then uh, built it. It was dead simple to build, quick and easy, and it, it pretty much worked the first time. I just had swap a couple wires around and put in one wire that I forgot and hey it was up and running and uh, just having a blast with it uh, developing some software for the system master on a computer that I know works you know and then I just take it over and put it in the system master the only difference is uh, for this program and for the counting program which I both prototyped here I had to insert a time delay this is only running off of a 555 timer the clock speed is very slow System Master's running at 4 megahertz, so I had to insert a time delay. Otherwise, the LEDs are like they're constantly on. But, uh, you know, it's helping me get the System Master up and running. And that was its initial purpose, but I have other ideas for this in the future. I think I'm going to turn it into a general purpose computer. I've got lots of board real estate left over here, and I can actually expand it if I want to. So, you know, I can put in, I can put in some RAM. It has no RAM at the moment. We're only operating out of the registers in the CPU. Um, so I can put in RAM. I can put in, uh, you know, more ROM. Um, I could put in serial I.O., better parallel I.O. I could do all kinds of stuff with this. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to expand it in the future. And this little breadboard computer may become um, a whole new series of videos as I expand it in the future. So if you're interested in that, watch for those videos. So now that I've got a, a development system for the Teletech, um, I'm going to be trying to exercise a lot of the functions on the Teletech. So let's go back and look some more at the Teletech. So yeah, that's that's a nice little project in itself that's, that's probably going to become a series of videos in the future. I'm having a whole lot of fun with it. Um, I'm going to expand it a lot, but I'm going to use it as a, a sort of a development system too for the System Master. And I've got plans on doing th other things beyond just, you know, getting some blinking lights going. Um, I want to, you know, try programming the CTC over here and see if I can start getting a baud rate out to the uh, uh, serial I.O. port. Um, and then I can start maybe writing out to it and reading from it. Uh, so I can maybe actually get my get something in my terminal program via the RS-232 port here. That would be nice. Make sure that's all working. It all seems to be working, but of course, since it wouldn't boot up, it wasn't doing anything. So, uh, yeah, and then, you know, maybe get a little memory test program going with it too and test out the memory. I have no idea if the memory is any good. You know, if these, some of these dynamic RAM chips could be bad, hard to say. It'd be nice to have a memory test program. And then down the road I'd like to get like an actual monitor program that I can put in here. Uh, the small computer monitor uh, project has some, has some good code that I think I can modify to work with this pretty easily. I'll have to recompile it, but hey, that's not a big deal. I just gotta make a few modifications to it and then I can hopefully plug um, an EEPROM chip in here and get this thing booting up. Now there are issues. I'm still having issues with the manual. I found two different versions of the manual for this. And the second version I found seems to be, you know, more accurate, but there's still problems. Um, here, this is right from the manual, and it's got a list of jumpers for changing out the EEPROM. So I can I change the EEPROM from a, a 2716 to say a 2732 or 2764. Well, the problem is, those jumpers don't exist on this board. 
it seems to be that it's hardwired for 2716. So I don't know if I can get a monitor that will fit in only 2K of EEPROM. I mean, certainly I'll get something basic, it's really basic. Um, but uh, yeah, the the jumpers just aren't there for changing the uh, changing the EEPROM, which I, they ought to be. I mean, they included a 28 pin socket, even though there's only a 24 pin chip in it. So there should be some way to tell it that, hey, you're, you've got a 2732 or 2764 now instead of a 2716. But, you know, the manual doesn't match the board. So I don't know. I'm going to have to look. Maybe I can find a yet a third version of the manual that will, uh, that will explain it a little better. But I am making some progress. We are slowly bringing this thing back to life. I mean, it obviously works. Um, you know, the CPU's working, uh, the clock's working, it, it's reading the EEPROM, it's outputting to the, the PIO. So, you know, this whole section of the board is working. Whether the memory's working or not, I don't know. Floppy drive seemed to be trying to load, but it wasn't getting there. You know, um, I assume the DMA chip's okay. I mean, why would it be bad? You know, everything else seems to be working. Uh, bus interface logic, hopefully it's all good. Um, oh, I missed an opportunity to buy uh, an S100 board on eBay, a backplane, and it was going cheap too. The guy had it at, up for sale as an auction, and I was watching it, and it's like, okay, well the auction's not going to end for a few days. So I, had, I was watching it, and then I didn't check in again for a couple days, and when I checked in again it was gone. He changed it to a buy it now, and somebody bought it. So, uh, uh, so I almost had a really cheap S100 backplane. So I gotta, I gotta stay on top of that stuff when I find stuff like that for sale cheap. Anyway, we're making some progress, a little bit, some baby steps, um, and hopefully, you know, when episode nine comes around, I can't guarantee when that'll be, uh, but maybe we'll have a little more progress. Be exercising the uh, the computer a little bit more, getting a a little more out of it. Maybe some serial I.O. even. That would be nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Give it a like. Give it a thumbs up if so. And subscribe to see future videos. Press the little bell icon that uh, YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks again for watching. Bye.